How are you ladies today? Good, how are you? Good. It's 10.30 a.m. and I'm calling this meeting of the Zoning Administrator to order. My name is Kristen A. Tumians. I'm serving as Zoning Administrator. Um, first um, item of business is approval of minutes for the April 4th, 2024 meeting. Uh, the minutes for April 4th are approved as submitted. Uh, the next, um, next item on the agenda is public comment. We are now taking public comments on item number three, non-agenda matters. This is a time when any person may address matters not listed on this agenda, but which are within the subject matter jurisdiction of this committee. If you're attending a person and wish to make a comment, please raise your hand. Hi. Hello. It's Mr. DeWitt. My name is Dwayne DeWitt. I'm from Roseland. I appreciate that you folks all are doing this type of work and that even more folks from the planning department are here today. I was <clears throat> hoping that you could look into something that happens over on Sebastopol Road. It's been in the city now for seven years. Things aren't getting better. And one of the problems has to do with the fact that people who do food trucks and food, uh, uh, it's not delivery, it's like they just set up taco wagons and tamale wagons and they got guys riding through there on uh, bicycles and stuff like that and I realized looking at your agenda that you folks actually work with giving permits to taco trucks so I'm like okay how do we deal with all these unpermitted folks that are just catch as catch can doing what they do and then <clears throat> right along Sebastopol Road in front of that area they're now calling a food court for a number of years, at least eight to 10 cars on a daily basis are there for many days in a row with for sale signs, all right? They're not moving. They're actually a small car lot, if you will. And you would think, well, okay, that's supposed to be some kind of permitted use also. We gotta get those cars out of there. They cause the traffic jams that back up Sebastopol Road from the Western Point at West Avenue, back down to Denton Avenue. And that's a long stretch in which you get cars backing up. And then they're adding to the pollution in our area where we already have the highest amount of childhood asthma as the more recent records have shown. I don't know what this year shows, but we've got problems in Roseland and they're not getting resolved that well. So I was hoping, having seen you work with taco trucks and that type of activity, please talk with these nice ladies and say, hey, how can we resolve some of this stuff, all right? And then last but not least, I can't be here for the entire meeting, but I see you're talking about a permit for a warehouse to have storage of books. Does somebody that owns a big building have to go <clears throat> that deep into stuff? Like, this is, oh, this is for the fourth I've got. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wow, that'll teach me, huh? <laughs> you know where I got it? Here. Oh, okay. Right over there. <laughs> okay. So thank you very kindly for your time today. You've gotten my drift on it. And uh, if I could ever be of any help to you on any of that stuff, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. Although that's never happened yet. <laughs> All the best to you folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, all of these are for the board. Oh, okay. Is there anyone else uh, wishing to speak on an item that is not on the agenda? Is there an agenda? That's not the correct agenda. Apparently. There, there is two items on the agenda. Maybe you can yeah. just talk about. Yeah, I'll give a brief summary. So I will close uh, the public comment and move on to zoning administrator business. The zoning administrator is appointed by the planning and economic development director and has the responsibility and authority to conduct public meetings and hearings and to act on applications for minor or reduced review authority projects or entitlements. Determination or decision by the zoning administrator may be appealed to the Design Review Board, Cultural Heritage Board, Planning Commission, or City Council as applicable to the decision. All actions taken by the zoning administrator may be appealed within 10 calendar days. If the final day of the appeal period falls on a non-business day, the appeal period will be, the, will be extended to the next uh, business day. 
So we have, um, just to give a brief overview of what we have scheduled for um, public meeting items. One is a 6.1 public meeting T-Mobile Tower Extension, Design Review 3186 Coffee Lane. And the other is a proposed uh, deck at 653 Charles Street, a landmark alteration permit. So moving on to the first item, the first schedule item, um, Ms. Hartman. Thank you, Zoning Administrator Tumians. I will be sharing my screen now. So I am presenting the application for a um, extension of an existing telecommunications tower located at 3186 Coffee Lane. So this is a minor design review permit application to allow modifications to an illegally established telecommunications tower, um, extending the height to allow six new antennas, radios, and sector mounts, as well as some supporting ground equipment. This is an aerial view of the uh, property, the project site, um, as well as just kind of an aerial view of the surrounding properties, which are all um, industrial kind of warehouse type uses. This is a closer aerial view and you can tell um, by the location of that purple star, I'm kind of seeing now on the screen, it's a little difficult to see, but it's essentially in the uh, far, uh, right corner of the uh, property. And that's where the tower is currently located. So the general plan land use designation is light industry and the zoning district is light industrial, which is applied to areas appropriate for some light industrial uses as well as commercial service uses and activities that may be incompatible with residential retail and or office uses and residential uses may also be accommodated as part of work lib projects. And as you can see, the surrounding parcels are also within that light industrial zoning district. This is the site plan here. And this is the proposed elevation where you can see um, where it's, how it's being extended. This is a view looking northwest from Coffee Lane at Condo Court. This is a view of the tower looking northeast from Coffee Lane at the Access Drive, off of yeah, off of the street Coffee Lane. This is the view looking southwest uh, from the westbound lanes off of Piner Road. We would like to point out that the federal government has preempted local government regulation for radio frequency emissions, as well as the FCC um, is the responsible for a uh, party for setting nationwide guidelines for safe RF levels, radio frequency levels, and restricts local authority to regulate radio frequency emissions or to deny an application to install wireless service facilities based on concerns about radio frequency emissions. Staff has not received any uh, comments uh, via phone or email at this time. And these are the required design review findings that staff must make, which um, are explained in more detail within the resolution. And these are, again, uh, the required findings essentially continued from the previous slide and staff was able to make all of the findings and are recommending approval of this design review application. The project has been found to be in compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act and qualifies for a class one exemption under section 15301 because the proposed modifications do not substantially change the physical dimensions of the existing towers or ground station resulting in a negligible expansion of the existing use. So it is therefore that the Planning and Economic Development Department recommends the Zoning Administrator approve by resolution a minor design review permit for the height extension of the existing tower to allow additional antennas, um, as well as other supporting uh, tower equipment 
and supporting ground equipment. And my contact information is here on the screen. And we also have the applicant um, available for questions via Zoom. Thank you, Ms. Hartman. Um, would the applicant like to add anything to Ms. Hartman's presentation? Arvind Naruzi here with uh, T-Mobile and American Tower. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Perfect. No, I do not have uh, anything to add. I just have one question. Um, just looking at the aerial, I noticed there's a lot of debris um, and some um, outdoor storage, and I don't see that a minor use permit was granted for outdoor storage. And I was wondering um, if the conditions shown on the aerial um, still exist because it behind the building and not readily visible from the road? Um, unfortunately, I don't know if um, what's depicted on the aerials uh, still exists at the facility. Okay. Um, it, um, that is the property owner's property. So if that's something that planning would like us to research further, um, I would need to get in touch with American Tower, uh, which is the entity that owns the telecommunication facility. Um, they're, they're the ones that have an agreement, uh, a lease agreement with the owner in place. Um, so if needed, they can find out from the owner and um, have their um, local contact find out if those conditions are still there. Okay. Thank you. Can I? Oh, yes. So I'm the building owner. Uh, oh, if you if you don't mind, um, I'd like to open... <laughs> open the public comment period. And if you're attending in person and wish to make a comment, please raise your hand. Yes. So now I can talk. Yes. <laughs> so yes, uh, obviously I'm the owner, but I don't actually, uh, you know, run the company that is the building. So uh, there has been, there has been a lot of, they store things outside. I mean, there's a big lot there. They assumed that there was no, I didn't know. I don't think they knew that there was needed to have a permit to have outdoor storage. I can pass that along, or if you can send me an email or something like that, sure. pass it along. But I think that they want to have an outdoor storage because there is the type of facility that they have. They need to be able to have some some outdoor storage. Okay. May I have your name for the record? John Macken, M-A-C-K-E-N. Thank you. Um, if I may, or after you. Close public yeah. comment or seeing that there's uh, no one else in the audience wishing to make a comment, I will close public comment. Um, staff is um, able to add it, maybe a condition of approval to this application that um, maybe prior to issuance of the building permit that a minor use permit be submitted for the outdoor storage because it's, it's sounding like that is something that wants to, if there is outdoor storage there currently, it may, um, may be good to just keep that. Um, and so to have it as a condition, essentially just saying um, prior to issuance of the building permit, um, all outdoor um, materials or equipment um, should be, is subject to a minor conditional use permit um, for outdoor storage. So um, is, and should there, is there a, I'm trying to be able to find something that I can pass along. Yes. So can you give me a, an address or a phone number or, or something that I should have? Um, I do not have a card with me, but I can I can write it down yes. for you and I can give it to you. Suzanne okay. will give you her contact information. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Ms. Hartman, I agree with adding that condition to the resolution. So I will um, approve the use. Um, I will approve the design review, minor design review for the um, extending the power um, with that added condition. Um, and this item, uh, this action is final unless appealed. And that appeal can be filed within 10 calendar days of today's decision. Um, and that date would be April 29th. Thank you. Yeah. Moving on to our next scheduled item, this is uh, item 6.2, landmark alteration permit for the Patricia Hill deck at 653 Charles Street, file number LMA 
24-003. It's a construction replacement of an attached deck on the backside of the primary dwelling. Project is exempt from CEQA. The project planner is uh, Mr. Jandon Briscoe. Thank you. You just project. Oh, you have to share it. There you go. He's got it. Good morning. I'm Jen Briscoe, the project planner for this, this deck, this proposed deck located at 653 Charles Street. The applicant is proposing to build a 182 square feet deck at the rear of their house. And as you can see, this is a rendering of the existing house right here. And to the right is a side view of the existing house. General plan land use designation is a low density resident low density residential. However, the zoning is plan development uh, number 0225, that's historic. And the reason why this permit needs a landmark alteration, I mean, why this project needs a landmark alteration permit is because this is located within the Burbank, the historic Burbank Garden District. As you can see, this is the part of the Burbank Gardens District, and this is where the um, project is located. And here's the site plan of, of the proposed deck and a floor plan of the house. And staff was able to make all of the findings required for this project. The project has been found in compliance with the California Environment, Environmentally Quality Act, CEQA, pursuant to CEQA guidelines, section 15302, no construction or, convert, or conversions. The project is categorically exempt from CEQA because the proposed project is a replacement of the existing deck. And I did receive one comment. Um, a, late, a neighbor, she emailed me the other day um, and she just had, she had concerns about, about the deck being, being uh, about the deck needed to be using redwood or a tree needed to be cut down for this deck. However, we, we as a planner, we do not regulate materials and there, and like for this proposal, there's no, there's no trees that are being cut down. Thus, it is recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the Zoning Administrator approve a landmark alteration permit to build a deck in the rear of the house. And, and this is my contact information. However, the, 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 the applicant representative is also online if there's any other questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Briscoe. What is the deck made of then if it's not? Um, is it like hardy plank or? Is the hardy plank correct? Oh, okay. So. Is the applicant, uh, does the applicant want to add anything to Mr. Briscoe's presentation? Um, if you can hear me, this yes. is Brian Luther speaking, and uh, no, I don't have anything to add, but I can answer any questions if you'd like. Okay. Yeah, I don't have any questions. The deck appears to be compatible with the architecture of the house, and um, I don't have any concerns with the size or the height or the materials. So... Um, before I uh, make a decision, I'd like to open it up to public comment. Um, but seeing that there's no one in the room, <laughs> I'm going to close the public comment. Um, and so I will be approving the um, project as uh, your resolution is written. Mm -hmm. And please note that this action is final unless an appeal is filed with the city clerk's office within 10 calendar days of today's decision. Pursuant, pursuant to zoning code section 20-62030, and that date is April 29th, 2024. Uh, with that, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you, everybody.